All right, students. Now let's study something which is again a very, very important aspect of my sequel. I mean, the broader subject is data objects, out of which we'll uh, just look at views today. So what are data objects? These are the objects which can be created inside a certain database for future uses over here, whenever the user calls for it. The data objects are tables. We have already seen this in detail. Then there are other data objects as well, which are views. Okay. Then we have indexes. And then finally, we have stored procedure, right? Today, we're going to see tables we have seen at length. We have seen length and breadth of table over here. Today, we'll see views. What are views? What are use cases of views? What is the application of view? Why? How is view created? Now, let me take a very simple example over here. Let's say there is a table over here. Now, assume whenever I'm saying table, it's it's huge data, right? When the number of columns over here, let's say 60, and there's another table over here, which is having the number of columns as, let's say, another 45 columns over here. And of course, there are uh, there's a primary key over here in this column. There's a primary key over in this foreign key over here in this column. And these two tables are, can be connected with a common column over here. For example, let's say this is your uh, product ID is the common column through which product underscore ID is the common column through which this is connected. For example, these are all the minute details of products and these are all the uh, details of the sales which happened in the last, let's say a quarter. Okay. Now uh, at times or probably this is the sales of this is the historical sales, let's say, okay, throughout, which means that there are millions of data over here. And uh, this again consists of at least thousands of data. Now I want, let's say there are, uh, let me say there are A, B, C and something like this. And let's say there are Z, X still are the columns over here. And we can call it uh, the number of columns over here. Let, let me call them one, two, three, four and so on like this till 45th column. Now uh, I want to create a table. Let's say uh, as a user, I uh, have to create reports and frequently I have to create a table which consists of, let's say A, C, E, F, 16, 42, and 45th row items over here. Getting the point. That is, these four rows are taken from table 1, and these three rows are taken from table 2. And I frequently want the, to retrieve on a timely basis this data because the sales data is updating, right? Right. And of course, the product data might also update based on you know, adding new products over there. But so I want this kind of a data on a frequent basis. The problem is every time I want this data, I have to join these two tables and run a query. And this is where views comes into picture. Views is something that it's, it's kind of a stored, uh, it's, it's an object which uh, contains a code which quickly, uh, you know, uh, throws this particular data without actually running the entire query. What we need to do is to write the entire query. For example, select star and this is my entire query. It's a complicated query because it is using joins as well, isn't it? So this is a complicated query. Now I can store this query as a view. What I need to do is to only run the view. So I don't have to run this entire code of let's say 10 lines repeatedly. I'll just run this view. I'll store this as a view and I'll run this view. And next time what happens is the, the exact table gets retrieved from the data without running the actual query repeatedly. Let's see how this works in MySQL. All right, so let me use a different database this time. Let me use orders, right? So I'll use order and yep. Now, if I look at the orders, there are plenty of tables over here, right? So let's say I want to select certain items over here. I want certain customer level information, right? I want to go for certain, let me put this in quotes, right? Customer level info i want certain let's say for customer level let me look at uh, the online customer let's say i want uh, customer id full name last name email phone number and let me say i want customer id let me see i can copy this text over here i don't think so i want customer underscore id right i'll go for customer id and let's say i want uh, customer gender right and then I want, uh, let's say, customer creation date, right? And this is my data for customer level. Let's say if I, I check out another table and from that table, I want some other information. For example, let me collapse this first. And I want, let's say, order header. If I go for order header and see which are the columns over here, it gives me the order ID and the customer ID. Here, I'm going for 
order id i want order id this is my sales level information right so i'm going for sales level information with order id and let's say of course i have to go for customer id otherwise how would i join these two tables right so i'll go for customer id let's say date in which the order was placed and let's say uh, the payment mode payment mode and 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 i don't think there's payment details kept over here then probably if i'm not wrong i'll get the okay there's no payment column over here is there a payment column over here payment date order shipment order status right and let me go for order items let me see which are the columns over here plenty of columns order id product id and product quantity let me go for quantity only okay so i want this information on a repeated level to create a certain report right now if i have to go for a, a normal query i would go something like this select 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 these names that is customer underscore id right uh, then customer id then uh, i'll go for something like uh, oc dot customer id i'll come back to what this oc is don't worry about it oc dot customer id i'll go for oc dot customer gender if i want to retrieve this information on a regular basis oc dot customer creation date date all right now this is done then i want order headers right so i'll go for oh oh dot let's say order id right then we'll go for oh dot customer id of course uh, i don't need customer id again because customer id is already been retrieved from the previous data uh, previous table right so i'll go for uh, oh dot order underscore date and then oh dot payment mode and then finally oh dot order quantity right let me just or i should say product quantity over here no no i think it is i'll just take the data order items i think we're going for order headers over here right so we're talking about payment mode and i don't think quantity is there so otherwise i have to join three tables i'll just remove this quantity right now for the time being let's remove this let's only join two tables right now from order underscore header which is my oh join and i think it was online customer right online underscore customer oc and then i'll give the field based on which i'll i would like to join these two table which is my oh dot customer underscore id is equal to oc dot customer underscore id right and now i think this is where the query is going to get complete right which means that i have to run this query multiple times so if i want to retrieve this data repeatedly as we can see there's 70 rows repeat uh, you know reflected over here and if i want this data on let's say bi-weekly basis or twice in a week basis i have to keep on running this query and that's a very inefficient way of doing it now uh, please don't worry about this oc i think these are nothing but aliases right uh, we have just given these two table alias oh is for online header and oc is the uh, alias for online customers and alias is just a nickname for the table so that we don't have to type in the table name again in case of joints so if i'm if you haven't gone through uh, the video of aliases i would uh, strongly urge you guys to go through the video it's a simple video you'll be able to understand it, right now coming back to the major point the point is i don't want to run this query repeatedly i want to save my work over here this query will be required now there are two ways you can take it as a text and place it somewhere and you can actually save that query and then you can find it and then run it on sql again which again is not that efficient the most efficient way is actually given by sql itself which says that you can actually keep this as a view that is you can do one thing that you can create view let's say the name is report right report data let's say and then you have to write in as so you're creating a view 
create a view report data. The name of the view is report data as now this is the entire command. This is the entire see whenever you're going to call for the view, this entire query is going to run in the backend. So you don't have to type it and run it again. That is next time I want this data. Next week I want this data to create the next set of report. What I need to do is to call. I'm so sorry, not create. I'll just call select star from not any table. It's just the report view or other report data. Now, once I call for this, the same data gets reflected over here without actually running the entire query again. And that's a very, very efficient way of storing the data in SQL only. Right. So that is the application of views. And this is what views does for you. They are nothing but a temporary table and you can retrieve them whenever you want to retrieve them from the database. Please make a note that actual table is not being created. Whenever you run this particular uh, uh, particular command over here or particular query for report fetching the report data, this entire query runs in the backend, but you don't remember it. SQL has already remembered it for you. Right. Now, one thing to uh, definitely note over here in uh, uh, once we talk about views is something like this, which I'm about to explain on this whiteboard. Let's say this is my data. Let's try and understand the relation between the data, the actual data, right? This is my data, right? And let's say this is my view. Let's create a proper three dimensional view over here. Pardon my drawing, guys. Now, whenever Obviously, views are being created from the major data, right? Obviously, data cannot be created from the views. But if I make a change in the data, the change gets reflected in the view as well, which is very obvious. Obviously, the sales data is going to update next week. And whenever I'm fetching the same data or the same columns, there, I mean, updated data is coming over there, right? So if I make a change in the data, the change gets reflected in the view. And it's definitely not the vice versa. That is, if I make a change in the view, the change will not be taken place into data. That is, I cannot affect the data using the views. For example, if I, uh, let's say, delete a certain column or uh, let's say modify something in a particular column or update something over here, right? All these deletion, modification and updation will remain with the view only. It will not be going back to data. But if I make similar changes in the major data, the same gets reflected in the view. Please remember that. And that is why view is nothing but a nickname. It's just a shortcut. It's a cross section of the data, but with an, uh, you know, uh, with, with, with an advantage of being updated whenever the original data gets updated, right? So these are data objects called as views.